A Maple Grove greenhouse that sustained a devastating fire last October is back to spreading Christmas cheer, and they owe it in large part to the kindness of others. The holidays are wonderful when it's very, the aesthetics are on point for it, so. There are few things more synonymous with Christmas decor than poinsettias. The poinsettias give you that pop of color. You got the bright reds, you've got the variegated ones, white ones, there's so many options. Yet the fact that all of these poinsettias are available on the retail floor here at Lyons Greenhouse and Nursery in Maple Grove is somewhat of a Christmas miracle. They survived a lot lately, so. In October, an arsonist set fire to their production greenhouses, which threatened a crop of roughly 18,000 poinsettias in need of heat and water. Yet one day after the fire, large crowds came out to help save the plants and transfer them to Green Valley Greenhouse in Ramsey, which volunteered to store the poinsettias until they were ready for the holiday season. It's really not a competition. They've got their customers, we've got our customers. They're in a in straits right now and Need a, need a spot for some poinsettias to grow till Christmas. Let us wrap these up for you real quick and I'll get you checked out. Once the plants were ready, they made their way back to Maple Grove. In my experience, the growing community, the green community has been very tight knit and um, always willing to help out when needed. And over the last few weeks, can I give you a handout to the car at all? Customers have made a point to come out to lines to show their support. Scooping up poinsettias, spruce tip pots, and everything in between to help make their homes look festive come time for Christmas. It meant a ton to all of us, and we're ready to come back in spring to, you know, give back, show them what they were here to save. Lines hopes to have the structures that were damaged in the fire rebuilt by April 1st. Investigators are trying to determine the cause of a fire that destroyed a building in Maple Grove over the weekend. Multiple 911 calls reported seeing a lot of black smoke at about 4.30 Sunday morning. According to city officials, a metal garage-like structure used to store equipment was on fire. The building was used by a top soil supplier that's no longer in business. The area is just north of the KOA campground site. Due to the lack of available fire hydrants, several neighboring fire departments were needed to assist. Twin Cities home sales saw a steep drop. According to Minneapolis area realtors, it was the lowest number of November sales in over a decade. The drop is attributed to hesitant sellers and the rise in mortgage interest rates. The three largest northwest suburbs all saw significant declines. Maple Grove saw a 42% drop in sales compared to November last year. Plymouth saw a nearly 44% decline, while Brooklyn Park had sales plunge 52%. If there's a positive for buyers, home prices are moderating, up 4% to a median sales price of $354,000. The holiday season will be a little more warm and fuzzy for a resident in New Hope. That's thanks to a dedicated neighbor. Shannon Sladden shares the story of the neighbor's mission to find Fitz. Um, I was terrified. Uh, I've never lost a pet before. So. Lori Hackett still remembers how she felt when her cat named Fitz accidentally got out of the house in November. Devastated immediately. It was nighttime and just realized very quickly you're basically looking for a needle in the haystack and trying to find him. She put signs up and started scouring her neighborhood. It was just trying not to lose hope as we uh, continued looking for him. And that's when a neighbor saw her flyer and reached out. That was still, you know, recent enough that I wanted to get on it right away. Erin, who asked us not to disclose her last name, is passionate about cat rescue. A lot of people picked up a COVID hobby and mine was rescuing cats. <laughs> Aaron looks for tracks in the snow and also uses traps filled with straw. If you have a lost cat, you're going to want one of these. You just need to get in the mind of your cat. You know, what triggers them? Where do they go? Lost cat expert Mary Tan with the Animal Humane Society says only 5% of lost cats are ever found. The first thing you should do is most cats, when they are found, if they're an indoor cat, they usually tend to only be found like three houses away pretty close because they're going to be scared. Tan says you should get the word out about your missing cat. It's going to be calling your local police departments. It's going to be flyering everything. And your number one resource is probably going to be next door. Next door probably has one of the highest unification rates for animals. Knock on every door in a one to two block radius. Show them a picture of your cat. Give them your phone number and say, if you see this cat, call me. 
and that's what worked in this case. Another neighbor tipped Lori off that Fitz was under a shed, so Aaron went out with her trap and caught him. When we caught Fitz, we were just telling them we needed this win so bad. It's so a little bit of dedication and you can you can save somebody's family pet. It was such a blessing. Her expertise and just giving me that hope to hang in there knowing that, you know, there's still a really good chance that we could find him. It was everything to me. It's what kept me going, to be honest. We helped save a cat. We helped make the, the family happy for the holidays. You know, this is uh, it's very rewarding. The number one piece of advice from the Humane Society in finding a lost pet, don't give up. Persistence is key. In Brooklyn Park over the weekend, the most important cultural celebration for local Hmong Americans. <laughs> Instrumental music, singing, fashion, and dance helped mark the Hmong New Year celebration. The cities of Brooklyn Center and Brooklyn Park joined a local Hmong nonprofit to host the event on Saturday. It's an especially important event locally. The Twin Cities Metro is home to the largest concentration of Hmong in the United States. We'll leave you with more of the celebration. The Cooper boys basketball team opened the season with two good wins. Friday they faced what should be a good rival in their new conference, the Tri-Metro, as they took on De La Salle. Jay Wilcox has the highlights. Longtime boys basketball power De La Salle visiting Cooper in their first conference meeting as Tri-Metro members. The visiting Islanders grab an early lead. Devin Irvin nails a three to make it 7-2 De La Salle. Cooper surges, Darius Mulba into Michael Cooper for the layup and the Hawks go up 8-7. Yusuf Hussein comes off the bench and pops a quick three to make it 13-8 in favor of Cooper. Michael Cooper drives to score here, he has a big first half with 14 points. His Hawks take a 27-22 lead into the halftime break. Second half and Jaden Morgan knocks down a three as the Islanders go back in front 36-35. After foul trouble in the first half, Sam Massaquay heats up for Cooper, scoring 14 after the break. They're up by four. Islanders top gun Nasir Whitlock has a slow start but closes strong, scoring 16 in the second half and 22 for the night as De La Salle beats Cooper 73-66. Jay Wilcox, CCX Sports. Thanks, Jay. Cooper also played Saturday morning in the all-day big stage event at Osseo High School. The Hawks won that one, beating Champlain Park 63-58. In other games there, Hopkins defeated Maple Grove 66-60, while Osseo lost to Eastview 73-56. Also, Armstrong lost 64-57 to Creighton Garham Hall. Benilde St. Margaret's beat Andover 82-78. And in the final game of the night, top-ranked Park Center beat number two, Lakeville North, 78-71. The Heritage Christian Academy girls basketball team is riding a four-game win streak after victories on Friday and Saturday. Here's Jason Malolo of highlights from the Eagles' Friday game. Heritage Christian Academy hosting Eagle Ridge Academy in girls basketball. HCA's Caitlin Jones crossover dribble drive and she finishes with the left hand. Then Jones slips her defender, penetrates, and passes to Abby Inman for an easy two. Heritage up 29-3. Inman scores 14. Just before the break, Heritage freshman Miley Guggenberger hits for three in a 38-point halftime lead. Second half, Jones gets the steal and goes all the way for a hoop. She nets a dozen, and Heritage wins big. The Eagles also beat Wabasha Kellogg on Saturday. Jason Melillo, CCX Sports. Two District 279 rivals went toe-to-toe -to -toe on the wrestling mat, and it all went down to the final match. Youth Wrestling Night at Park Center High School as the Pirates hosted Osseo in a Northwest Suburban Conference match. At 145 pounds, Osseo's Carter Williams spins and gets Kenny Shodia on his back, and he turns that into a pin. Williams' second period fall pulls the Orioles within 13 points. 
160 pounds, a nice move by the Pirates' Jackson Sanders. He gets the takedown on Nick Bang and then a quick pin. The Pirates lead 30 to 21. At 170, a good match for Osseo's Matthew Grassi. A second period takedown here on Jacob Hansen on the way to a 10 to 1 major decision for Grassi. The Orioles take the lead at 28-27. 195 pounds. Parks in his Mo Bamba has Dylan Gutierrez on his back for a long time. Eventually secures the pin. Bamba's fall puts the Pirates ahead 39-28. Next match is 220, and the Orioles' Vile Kamara is matched up with Adam Verkylin, and Kamara gets a first period fall. That pulls Osseo within 39-34. So they need a pin at heavyweight to win the match, but instead it's the Pirates heavyweight, William Russell, who gets Alfredo Fowler's shoulders to the mat for the fall. That's the way it ends as Park Center beats Osseo 45 to 34. In Brooklyn Park, John Jacobson, CCX Sports. Find more prep sports games and highlights at ccxmedia.org and follow us on social media.